This is Mr. Pillar, uh, ECET 273, Modern Energy, Lecture 4B. This is an additional lecture for the harmonic material. Uh, where do harmonics come from? Based on Chapter 3 of the Squarenina DeWitt text and Chapter 6 of the Frodo Patrick text. Uh, so where do they come from? What are their power effects? What are the effects on the power system of harmonics? Okay, so nonlinear loads cause harmonics. Well, what do we mean by nonlinear loads? Well, we'll get into that. Um, the use to be an issue that the power company dealt with. Um, large industrial commercial uh, users also worried about it, but now it's getting to be a an issue down to the general populace, and that is because of our friend, the DC power supply. Um, We've increased the amount of electronics in our homes, and electronics run on DC, not AC, generally speaking. And for every DC, every electronic device you plug in the wall, you plug a DC power supply in, and they uh, cause substantial harmonics. So what am I meaning by electronics? Um, your TV, your VCR, your DVD player, your stereo, your uh, phone charger, your microwave, uh, all your clocks, your computers... Uh, it can go on. Uh, so where does this come from? Well, when a load is connected to the DC power supply, uh, the capacitor gets fully charged as the voltage starts to decrease, a diode shut off. Capacitor then discharges the current to the DC load, and the DC voltage then decreases. As VAC swings back to the positive, uh, it becomes higher than the DC voltage. Uh, capacitor pulls in charge and creates a transient. Uh, that transient becomes a repetitive function. Boom, boom, boom. Every 60 hertz. That repetitiveness means that there's harmonics. And we be, we can see the series of harmonics with uh, an FFT meter. or We can go through and do the math uh, like we talked about in lecture 4A. Here's kind of an idea of a device. This is an industrial device. A VFD, a variable frequency drive, which we'll talk about later in the lectures. What you need to know is that we take a AC waveform in to a VFD, convert it to a DC signal, and run it through a microcontroller uh, to then output a, um, a derived AC signal with variable frequency. Uh, so on the left, you can see the uh, input voltage with input current spikes happening, uh, transients, and on the right you see the FFT, a heavy amount of third and ninth and fifteenth harmonics going on there as opposed to the fundamental. A single phase bridge rectifier, again, heavy on the third and the ninth harmonics. We can eliminate triplet harmonics by using a three-phase bridge rectifier. So rather than using a single-phase VFD to run a three-phase motor, we could use a three-phase VFD. Um, and here's a configuration of how you would set that up. This is using SCRs, so they're phase angle fired, and you can adjust the voltage out with that. That idea, you can see here, you end up with an ampacity uh, input to the three-phase bridge rectifier with the signal above and you end up with a drop-out of the harmonics of the third kind uh, so 3, 9, 15, 21 they all go away so we know that the triplet harmonics are the ones that are uh, zero sequence so they're additive on the neutral but we still have those other harmonics um, we could go into further detail and eliminate those too but the triplets are the necessary evils or, or the ones that we really need to get rid of um, so what's the big deal? Well, nonlinear loads in, in the power grid were parallel loads. Uh, so a nonlinear load it causes issue and distortion to other loads in parallel. So your neighbor has a very noisy system. It comes down and causes uh, the noise on your line. And here's the other issue: we have effect of it, the harmonics affect meters. Um, there are three types of meters out there. There's average responding, peak responding, and then true RMS. Most meters today are true RMS, but there are a fair share of average responding and peak responding out there. Um, producers of meters assume, for the most part, a clean sine wave, and there's no harmonic content. 
Uh, we, we can measure harmonic content with a THD, with the THD of the signal. We can also check with the crest factor, which is a ratio of the peak of the waveform to the RMS of the waveform. So basically, it's the ratio of peak versus RMS. So for a sinusoid, you assume a crest factor of 1.414, or radical 2. A triangle, you would assume radical 3. A square wave, you assume a, 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 a crest factor of 1. Um, so if you have a waveform that you assume to be a sine wave and it has a, a substantially different crest factor of 1.414, there are harmonics there. See, an average responding meter actually blocks DC and rectifies the AC signal um, and then we measure out uh, our RMS versus the DC signal. Uh, a ratio of 707 to 0.631, it should come out with a, even one volt signal, which should end up with a measurement of 1.11. So we should be able to multiply 0.707 times that peak and get our value. It's kind of a fudge factor. If harmonics are present, the crest factor will not be radical 2, and the ratio of 0.111. 1.111 will not be true, so the average responding meter can only give a correct RMS reading for a signal frequency wave. Peak responding meter detects the peaks and then uses the same assumption and again uses a fudge factor. It divides by radical uh, 2 to give you an RMS value. It doesn't actually find the RMS, uh, but again that's only good for a single frequency. A true RMS meter actually takes in samples around the point, squares, integrates, takes the square root, and all that fun stuff and does the math. It does the integration for you. Uh, and it works on the multi-sine wave, uh, multi-frequency sine waves, which in fact most meters that you're going to purchase today are true of RMS, but you're going to find out in lab uh, the effects on average responding and peak responding meters. Other effects uh, are on conductors. You end up with I square R heating issues. If you have a shared neutral, a four wired system, the common is generally derated uh, to the size of the, the we generally de it's common to derate the size of the neutral. Uh, we don't if it is a truly balanced load, there should be no current flow on the neutral. Uh, so you reduce the size of that current uh, current carrying conductor uh, to reflect that. But if you end up with uh, lin non linear loads, you end up uh, causing the potential of burning your neutral line up. Tripling currents add up on the neutral. Uh, neutral is not even protected by a circuit breaker, so higher neutral currents can cause voltage drops and may require separate neutrals for each conductor, and that's just more money. Uh, you also have excessive heating of transformers. Uh, we have a thing called a K rating, so as you increase your K rating, you increase uh, your dollars. Um, if you know that you're going to only have linear loads, a K1 transformer is fine, but you could end up with a K4, a K9, or a K13, which is a multiplying factor. You make the transformer four times the size of a standard transformer, nine times the size, 13 times the size, but rate it only as a K1, um, and then thusly increase the cost. Circuit breakers. Um, most circuit breakers have thermal sensors, so if you have an excessive amount of heat, uh, you cause an early trip. Uh, harmonics cause heat. Same technology uh, on most circuit breakers as an average or peak responding meter, so you're going to end up with the same type of problems. It makes the assumption of the fudge factor. You can get true RMS technology uh, circuit breakers, but then again, it's extra money. You've got to put a microprocessor on every one of your circuit breakers rather than a standard magnetic and thermal strip. So harmonics also affect uh, power factors, cause issues on telecom systems, sensor networks in the building, HVAC networks have sensors all over the place, security systems uh, cause issues there. So in summary, harmonics can call our extra frequencies of the fundamental, triplin currents have negative effects on the power system, there's ways we can mitigate along the line. Uh, they end up costing extra money if uh, we let them sit vacant and not uh, try to solve their problems prior to the design of the system.